we can deal with I have seen how we can deal with strings in python in this lesson we are going to talk about lists in python so lists are really like more like an a string but only thing is that this is like multi dimensional array strings are like single dimensional array so let's start by understanding how lists are stored internally and once you understand that rest of the things are going to feel more like strings so here i have created a variable which is called fruits and this is how you define a list okay so to define a list you just need to use these brackets square brackets so you need to use opening and closing square brackets and that's how you are going to define an empty list okay so if you want to fill members inside that empty list you need to use all the members separated by comma so for example here you can see that we have 1 2 3 4 like four members or you can call it four elements in this list and which are name of the fruits okay so we have a fruit name which is called apple banana mango and strawberry so all of these four uh, fruit names are part of a list variable which is called fruits so that's all you need to know about declaring or creating a variable with a list of items okay So now if you do type on this fruits function then you are going to see that python is going to return that this fruit is a class of type okay a type now uh, let's go ahead and see how basically this is going to look like so now once you define this variable this is how basically it is going to look like logically i mean for it is going to be very easy for you to understand this way okay so this is more like a multi dimensional array So all of these different fruit names are going to be indexed in this way. So at the zeroth place you are going to see apple, and then first place is going to be for banana, second place is going to be for mango, and third place is going to be for strawberry. Okay. Now, uh, if you see, we have array index starting from left to right, and also we have array index from up to down. Okay, so. whenever you are navigating through list of elements in a list in that case whenever you are using index the first index is going to represent the items which are starting from top to bottom and then if you want to go through second index in that case uh, this is the index or index number which are going to kick in so it is going to be better if i explain you by example okay so for example let's say if i want to print all the elements of a list in that case i'm going to use a syntax like this so i have fruits declared and equal to symbol and then i have list of all the fruit names okay and if we do print fruits in that case it is going to show us the output with all the fruit names as it is shown here on jupiter notebook now let's say if we want to print only the first element okay so the first element is at index position of 0 okay so in that case this is the syntax which you need to follow so you need to use fruits followed by the index number and as you have already learned in previous session that to give an index number you need to use these square brackets okay so syntax is very similar to how you uh, navigate through or traverse strings so now once we do fruits 0 we are going to get the name of the fruit which is at position 0 okay so that's why we have got output of apple okay because apple is at position of 0 index now let's say if i want to see what is the position what is the letter of at 0th location for the first element okay in that case basically we need to use fruits 0 so fruits 0 is going to give apple and then out of this apple we are inter interested to know only the position or only the letters which are at first location so that's why once i specify fruits 0 and then from whatever the uh, list we have got we want to see zeroth item at that okay in that element so that's why now here you see we have got output as a because out of apple we were interested only at zeroth element now let's say you wanted list of or let's say for the first item you wanted to see first three characters in that case 
again whatever slicing you have learned in previous session for strings you, you can use the same so in this case you can see we are interested in fruits which is at location 0 or index position 0 which is apple and then out of that element we are interested to know only first three letters or you can say first three characters so once we do 0 to 3 so this is a range okay this is a range for uh, strings and this is what we have learned in previous session so once we do that we get an output of app so here you can see that from 0 until 3 as you know that when you are slicing whatever you specify as the end range that is not included okay so that's why when you specified from 0 to 3 3 was not included only 0 first and second was included and you got the output of app okay so hope until now everything is very clear and now we are going to move on to hands-on session all right uh, so this is how basically you create a fruit variable with name of all the items or elements now here if we want to print all the fruits i have just used print fruits okay and here we have done some slicing now i'm just going to delete these first two cells and we are going to go through remaining operations so in order to delete any cell you can just select that cell and then you can use these uh, cut selected cells or this scissors icon once you click on here that selected cells is going to get deleted so i want to delete this one as well so i'm going to select this scissors symbol again and now uh, whatever the unwanted items or cells were uh, are now deleted okay so now what we can do is let's create some more uh, working space by going to view and clicking on toggle header so now header has gone and now here you can see we have list of all the fruits okay so i downloaded this list of fruits from internet and i got so many number of fruits which i am not even aware of so yeah so all of these now i have assigned to fruits variable and notice here i have given only single quotes so it doesn't matter you can specify string using single quote or double quotes it is going to work the same way okay so now these are the number of fruits which are which we are going to assign to fruits variable so once you do that click on control enter and then this is going to run now let's say we want to print all the fruit names in that case you can just see just say print fruits and click on control enter and here you can see list of all the fruits which are available okay so in this example you can assume that we are working or we are uh, let's say working on a software which is going to be used in a grocery store and you are going to create some of the operations which are very frequently used in a grocery shop okay so let's say uh, a customer entered into grocery shop and he asked one of the staff that what are the fruits you have available in your grocery store in that case he can just run print fruits and he can get list of all the fruits which are available okay in the grocery store now uh, let's say if somebody is interested to know that at which position or in which rack you have kept okay some specific fruits okay so in this case um let's say uh, we want to know what is the fruit which is kept at rack number second or rack number third okay so i'm just going to change it to let's say we want we are interested in knowing what is the items kept at rack number two okay because as you know in grocery shop all the fruits are kept into some specific shelf or rack whatever you want to call it so let's say we are interested in knowing the second uh, at second rack which is the fruit which is kept on so i'm going to do print fruits and we are interested in second index element okay and then we are going to hit control enter and here you see we have got output of apple because here you can see that this apple is at position number two okay again remember this item is at position number zero and this is at position number one this is at number two okay because array always starts with zero now uh, let's say you want to ask another question so you want to know which is the fruit which is kept at the last rack okay in that case again as we uh, did in string whenever you want to see the last element we can use negative number so in this case also it is going to work the same way 
if you are interested in knowing the last element you just need to specify minus one and it is going to tell you the last element which is available okay now let's say if you delete this last element here and we also need to run this again so this fruits these new values are going to get assigned to fruits and now if i run this again this fruits minus one and this time you are going to see that we have got different output because the last element is now white sepote okay and here also if you want to see list of all the fruits then you can run this again and now you can see the output is different okay so now you know how to get the first element now you know how to get the last element okay so to get the first element you can just do fruits zero and then you are going to see which is the a fruit which is kept on uh, kept at let's say rack zero or shelf zero and if you want to know which is the fruit which is kept at last rack then you can just run fruits uh, minus one in the square bracket now let's say you want to know which are the okay what are the five fruits which are kept at last five racks okay so in that case you can do fruits minus five and then you can give colon and then you don't need to specify any number for the ending range okay for starting range you are saying minus five because you are interested in knowing the last five fruits and for the ending range if you don't specify anything it is going to traverse from last five until the end of the list okay so once you do that and press control enter now you see we have received this output so if you see here now these are the five elements which are kept at the end of the rack and this is the output which we have received okay now let's say we are interested in another operation which is called let's say we want to know what are the fruits which are kept at first three racks or first five racks in that case again you can make use of range okay so you are going to specify fruit starting from zero and ending at five again remember index position of 5 will not be inclusive so we are going to see 5 elements which are starting from 0 until 4 so hit control enter and the output which you have received is dates mango apple apricot and avocado okay so here you can verify the same that this is the list of items which we have available now uh, let's say that you uh, Let's say that all the bananas are uh, sold out in your store. In that case, you want to update the value of banana, okay, and with strawberry. So, what, whatever rack or whichever rack which was used for banana, now you don't want to keep banana, you want to keep strawberry there, okay. So, in that case, again, this is comment line, I'm just going to delete, okay. So, in that case, basically first you need to find what is the element okay or what is the position or you need to know basically which is the rack number where banana was kept okay now to find the rack number where banana was kept we use index okay index function so i'm just going to comment remaining lines and now here you see if we want to search any items and we want to know at which position or which index number that item is kept at then we can make use of index function okay so here i'm going to use fruits which is a variable name which is having a list of values and then dot index and inside that we are passing the variable or we are passing you can say the list of item which we want to search okay so here i want to search banana so i'm just going to hit control enter and you see the output which we have received is number five because you can see here in the list that banana is kept at index position of five okay so somebody told us that banana was finished in the grocery store and we should now be keeping strawberry on that rack because that rack is empty okay so in that case our first thing was that to know which rack banana was kept on so we have searched that banana was kept at rack number five and now we are going to assign new fruit names or we are basically going to keep new fruits at that rack number okay so in order to assign any value to specific element you can just use the index number and assign any value to that so here i'm going to do fruits 5 is equal to strawberry and hit control enter 
and now basically it has not printed any element or any output because we didn't run print statement but basically this value has been replaced with strawberry okay so if we do if we now print fruit at position of 5 so, so I'm just going to comment this before we run this and now if I want to print uh, fruit element number 5 we are going to get output of strawberry because now we know bananas are sold out and now strawberry has been kept at the same position where bananas were kept now uh, let's say there is a customer came and he was interested he is interested in knowing do you have mangoes in in stock in your grocery shop okay so in that case if we want to answer this question we can actually search any specific element in our list okay so for example in this case i'm actually searching for uh, let's say we want to search for mango which is we know it is at position number two so in that case basically we need to use an uh, an if statement okay so here we need to type if and followed by the element which we want to look for and then we need to type in space fruits and we need to use this colon again do not worry about this if statement we are going to learn this in more detail in our upcoming sessions so for now basically all you need to know is that if you want to search for a specific element in the list you can do that okay so here if i want to know if mango is in the stock or not so i can search this uh, fruit in the list of available fruits and then let's see what is the output which we receive okay so here if you see if i hit control enter the output which we receive is that yes stocks are available okay so we as we know mangoes are still available so that's the output which we have received now we know that bananas were empty and all the bananas are sold out now let's search for banana and see what is the output we get okay so in this case i'm going to search for banana and i'm going to hit control enter and now you can see the output which we have received is basically that there is no stocks available and banana is all sold out okay now uh, let's say there is new truck came with banana and now we have stocks again okay so in that case now as you know that you have already kept strawberry on the same rack where you had actually previously kept banana so now when banana has come you do not have any rack available okay you do not have basically the same rack available you want to keep banana at the last rack which is available okay so in that case you can just use append function so if you do fruits dot append and here you need to specify the element which you want to append and in that case that list is going to have new element okay so in this case if i do fruits dot append banana and then i print fruits now you can see that banana has been added in the end of the list okay so if you see the previous output we didn't have banana at the end of the list and now we have banana at the end of the list okay and now let's say if our let's say we want to remove one of the fruits or we are no, no longer interested in selling one of the fruits maybe for whatever reason let's say we are not getting enough revenue or there is not enough for whatever there is not enough benefit in selling that fruit or let's say that fruit itself is not being grown in that case let's say we want to remove that uh, list of re remove that uh, fruit name from the list of available fruits in that case we can use remove method okay so we are going to say fruits dot remove and we are going to supply the list of item which we want to remove okay so in this case we want to remove mango and once you do that and press control enter now you see the output which we have received is basically doesn't have fruits called mango okay so there is no fruit called mango in this case now uh, let's say that there are all the fruits which are sold out and you just want to empty the list okay so once all the fruits are sold out you you want to make sure that correct value is represented in your list as well so in that case you can empty all the items in the list by doing fruits dot clear okay so once we do fruits dot clear and hit control enter you see the output which we receive is an empty list okay so now this list doesn't have any element in the list 
Now let's assume there is another use case in that let's say we have uh, two branches of our grocery store. We have one branch let's say in location A and then we have another branch in location B okay which is our second branch. Now we really want to consider all the fruits from branch A and branch B in our stock okay. So let's say our second branch fruits still have apple and mango in the stock and then whatever the fruits okay whatever this variable fruits uh, had this is from the branch location A okay so in that case basically if we if I want to see what is the total stock which I have available including branch 1 and branch 2 in that case we can actually just merge the two lists or basically we can concatenate the two lists and that can be done by just using plus operator okay so here fruits you know fruits is our variable where we had all the fruits and now we have cleared all that items and now there is another variable which is again a list variable which is having two elements apple and mango so we are merging these two lists and the final output which we are receiving is apple and mango okay so fruit one was empty however we still have some stock in our second branch and we still have few fruits like apple and mangoes available in our second branch okay now uh, let's say you had a use case which which is like uh, your second store is closed and whatever the fruits which you had you want to move from second store to the first store okay so you want to uh, close down the second store and you want to move all the fruits from second store to the first store in that case you can use fruits dot extend to extend basically first list itself okay so in this case we are not really creating a new variable we are just extending or extending the list of elements which we had in the first store basically fruits okay so in the fruits I'm going to do fruits dot extend and in the parenthesis we need to provide the second list okay so second list is list of fruits which we had available at second branch fruits so once we do that the output which we have received is same now let's say we had more number of fruits at a second store okay so I'm just going to copy and paste this here and let's say rather than this we had more fruits let's add banana and durian okay and now hit control enter and now you see that on the first store or basically fruits list we have more number of items or fruits available okay so hope these examples were very clear and if you still have any question please feel free to ask in Q&A section and I'll be more than happy to answer all the queries. Okay, one more important thing which I wanted to tell you is that uh, Python lists are not uh, limited only to two dimension. In Python list you can have n dimension. Okay, so you can have three dimension, four dimension or basically you can have n number of dimension. So basically you can have list assigned to a list. Okay, and so on. I do not want to complicate it that's why I have kept everything so simple so in our use case later on if we require to have three dimensional or four dimensional uh, list in that case I'll be explaining that to you.